How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the second video on web scraping. Um, we're going to be using the same website, Scrape This Site, and we're going to be covering pagination. Um, essentially, it's scraping content off of multiple pages. So if you are new to web scraping, I would first look back at my first video to get an understanding of what we're doing because we're not going to recover those topics. Um, this will be pretty simple as well. There's just a couple more concepts that we're going to touch on. Um, if you're having any trouble understanding Beautiful Soup, I would refer back to the documentation. Um, so getting started, we want to scrape some of the content off of this website, except there's multiple pages and we don't want to rerun our script for each page. We'd like to do it all, all in one go. So what we're going to want to do is, um, just like with any other web scraping project is try to get an understanding of what, what the page the layout of the page and how for us since we are handling multiple pages how the URLs are going to change for each page so we'll in this project we'll just scrape uh, the team name the year and maybe the wins and losses because if we can do that we can do the rest of it we don't have to do all this because that's just writing extra code so one thing you might want to do first is just view other pages to see what happens. And if you look at the ending of this link now that we are on page two, you'll see there's a question mark and then they have a variable page num equals two. So if we were to go back to page num equals one, we would be able, we would be on the first page. And same if we jumped over to page 20. And we can see that there are 24 pages of content. Um, similar to scraping only a couple of these, we're just going to do a couple pages. We're not gonna do all 24 of them. But um, understanding how this routing is going to work, we can actually get into the code. So we know there's 24 pages. So something that you could do is something like max pages equals 24 um, current page equals one and then just begin to iterate we know there are 24 pages but again we don't want to do all of them so we'll just say something like max pages equals three um, you don't have to do it this way you could just keep iterating over and checking if there's content on the page and then stop then in case there are a different amount of pages or if they don't show you all the page numbers, but we're gonna to try to keep this tutorial fairly simple and just kind of introduce uh, this new routing concept into scraping multiple pages at once. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is loop over all of the um, different pages so we can do a for loop and we can say something like, um, while current page is less than max page, or we'll do less than or equal to. And we are going to need to actually build this link. So we have the base link here in our code that we're gonna pass into this function. But essentially what we're gonna to have to do is add this to the end of the link and make a request to it. We're gonna to have to then change it to two for page two and three for page three and so on and so forth. There are a couple different ways of actually building the string. I'll be using f strings. So something we can do is first just see if we're doing this right, we can print out the page. So I'll print out the base URL and then we're going to need this question mark, um, page equals, page num equals, and then the actual current page that we will be iterating. So you can see if I go ahead and run this code, and I actually made um, a loop mistake, what we're gonna also need to do after we have created the link is actually iterate our page. Once I've done that, you'll see we have um, the links for the first page, the second page, and the third page. And I'll go ahead and just copy this link and paste it into my browser. 
and as you can see it will correctly bring us to the third page so this does work and this is how we'll be able to dynamically scrape multiple pages in our script so from there we are just going to follow the actual URL um, requests uh, that we did in the first video one thing I'm actually going to do is um, create this as a variable first. So I'll just call this current URL. We'll do that and we can print that again. So now just as before, we'll do our raw HTML equals request.get and we'll pass um, the URL that we have created. And then we will need to create the beautiful soup object. But first, I will just um, see if this is working one more time by checking the status code as I talked about in the first video. As you can see, we have a 200 success status code for all of our requests made to the pages that we have created from dynamic links. So we know that this is going to work. So before we proceed, let's just take a look at um, the actual HTML to see what we're going to need to do. So we can see that there is a table. If I hover over it, you'll see this whole table body. And then in each, um, there's a table row that corresponds to each team. And if we look through the uh, the DOM, there is no more table row elements besides the ones that actually hold content and this, um, these table headers. But we will use the table row that corresponds to the class equals team. So we will gain access to this, and then once we have access to each table row where our class equals team, we can extract these. Um, other elements. So we will go ahead and create our beautiful soup object as before by doing soup equals beautiful soup. We'll pass the text of our raw HTML and we will use the HTML.parser as before. So next we're going to have to run a for loop over each of these table rows with the class team. So kind of as before with the, t uh, the divs of page, we're going to do something like for entry and soup.findall because we want to gather all of them. And we want table row and we want our class to be team. And then once we have access to each of these, we can begin by pulling our team name, year, wins, losses, and so on. So you can pause the video and try to work from this real quick to see if you can actually achieve what we're doing. If not, that's okay because I will go over it in a second. Okay, so now that we're back, um, I will go ahead and pull the team. So we'll do team equals entry because entry is this entire table row. And we want to find this TD tag and since we want um, the team name first it will be of class name so then just to make sure it works I will go ahead and print team and then show it and remember if we just if we just uh, printed the team this would give us the entire HTML tag, so we will use the dot text attribute. And actually, I will just do one page for this first. And I forgot to add a comma right here. As you can see, we have pulled all of the team names. We can also use a dot strip method to remove all of that white space in the middle. 
as you can see, we have successfully pulled the teams off of the first page. So with this code, maybe you want to give it a shot to see if you can pull the years, wins, and losses. Now we'll be back in a second and we can go over that. Okay, so now that we're back, I'm just going to go ahead and copy in. This is how you would find the year. It's similar, except we want the class to be year. And this will be the same thing with wins and losses as well. So I'll go back here. And I'll do the same thing for win. You can see I had the dot text dot strip, but we can also um, just do that when we print. But actually, it might be nicer to just do it all here to make our print statement smaller. We have the team year wins, and we can go ahead and do the losses as well. So I'll change this to losses, and for our losses, the class name is losses as well. So once we have that done, we can just print something um, to display all the content that we have just scraped. And remember, we have only done one page at this point. Now, if I was to print this out and see team Boston Bruins, they have 44 wins in 1990 and 24 losses and so on and so forth. So this content is being scraped, but we have not handled the multiple pages. The reason why we haven't um, done that yet is because something that you're going to want to do similar to checking the the robots.txt page that I talked about in the first video is you're not going to want to send all of these requests at once. Since computers can work really fast, they're way faster than um, a user agent who's navigating a website, you can be accessing 24 pages, these 24 pages in a very short amount of time. If you're scraping a ton of pages off of a website, they might think that you are um, attacking their website because you're sending so many requests at once. Um, I've, when I was getting into web scraping, I wasn't um, adding a sleep or I wasn't adding a little time interval in between each page and I was actually getting timed out from making requests on certain pages. Something you're going to want to do is also add in a sleep method. So I'm just going to do a time dot sleep and we will do 10 seconds in between each page. Then I will go ahead and change the max pages to two and we will go ahead and just scrape two pages off of this website. And I will also print some new lines so that um, we can tell the different pages. Oops, and I did that inside of the loop, not inside of the loop. So I'm going to actually move this back a tab because we don't want to run the request in each table row that we're iterating. We want to do it in each page. I'm going to now rerun the code. As you can see, we have the first website scraped with the link at the top and our program will be sleeping for 10 seconds before making another request to the second page. So we have just successfully scraped two pages. Um, we can look Detroit Red, Ring, Detroit Red Wings, um, 43 wins, 1991, 25 losses. So this is um, correctly scraping the content. And again, going over what we did, we looked at the way that the routing worked on the web page and were able to change the number to different pages that way that we didn't have to run our script for each individual page. And from here you can add this to a database or some sort of object if you wanted to collect data off of the website. But 
yeah this is the end of the tutorial if you have any questions you can leave a comment down below i will have this code source code linked in the description you can pull it from a github you can play around with it um yeah the takeaway message is when you're web scraping any site you're gonna have to inspect what you want to grab see see how it's placed in the dom you can see we could take each table row of team we just find all of those i'll go down so you can see it we if we find all then we'll be looping through each row of teams and then looping through each row of teams we could actually find these td classes that we wanted based on what the class name was so thanks for watching and have a good day